in our previous session we have worked on cart function we have created all this function and also i understand this is very confusing but if you keep on practicing if you keep on revising this one then you will understand this concepts okay so you don't have to panic and you don't have to quit if you are not getting you can just explore any of the website whichever you feel comfortable you can read the resources you can read the notes you can watch videos we are having plenty of videos inside youtube we are having plenty of resources and everything is available for free so you can watch that one you can keep on increasing your knowledge once you understand the concept then you can continue with any of the project okay don't get confused whatever we have done if you are getting confused you can just take the screenshot of this let me just decrease the size you can just take the screenshot of this cart function and you can try from your end okay this is the cart function you can just take the screenshot and for this get ip address i have already told you from where you have to copy the code and we have written the function for get ip address here this cart function you can call anywhere anywhere if you call it is going to work that is inside this file anywhere you can call below footer you can call above footer you can call okay it doesn't matter because we are just inserting the data and we are just checking for this conditions now what we are going to do in this session is we are just going to display the number of items present inside that now inside previous session we have added four items inside the cart and also we have worked on this now again when i click on this add to cart this item is already present inside the database and this item will not be stored inside the cart okay now totally four items i am having now here instead of displaying the static data one i am just going to display the dynamic data how many items are available inside the cart that many items i have to store here now if i just come to demo you can see here i am having three items now when i click on this cart you can see three items will be displayed for me again i'll come to home page again i'm just going to add this item is added to cart now you can see dynamically it is going to change and now here i am having the item as four again when i click on this cart totally four items will be displayed for me okay first we are just going to work on this how to display this dynamic number here now here i'm just going to come now below this function we are having this cart function now below this i'm just going to write comment i'll just write here function function to get cart number cart item numbers below this i'll just create one function i'll just write here cart item cart item number cart item okay it completely depends whatever names you want you can give then below this from this function from this cart function i'm just going to copy the entire code i'll just copy this entire function and below this i'm just going to paste okay we are just doing the same thing now instead of inserting the data we are just going to check for that one now as i already told you when we discussed about cart each and every user will be having different ip addresses now inside cart table only multiple users are going to insert the data multiple users are going to do add to cart so we are going to have different ip addresses so using that now let me just explain you in more clear way i'll just take new file okay now inside this cart suppose imagine this is user 1 and this is user 2 now inside this cart this user 1 has ordered item number 1 okay that is product id 1 and also the product id 2 okay this is the user 1 and this is the user 2 user 2 has ordered product id 3 and product id 2 but for each user we are going to have separate ip address here we are having ip address and here also we are having ip address okay but if this user is going to order id number 2 we will be getting this error because we have given here primary key so if you want to remove primary key you can remove from there but as of now we are not going to remove primary key for our table okay we are just going to keep that one only for explanation i am just going to explain you this now if you are hosting this website then we have to remove primary key from card details okay now this user is having product 1 and 2 and this user is having product 1 and 2 now product id we cannot fetch the data okay because this user is having 1 and 2 and this user is having 3 and 2 now if i select product id 2 this is going to select only this one or either this one it is not going to select for both okay if i just select user id 1 it will be confused which product id they have to select either this one or this one so for that we are just checking the condition for ip address if here for this i am having separate ip address and for this i am having separate ip address so using that ip address we are going to fetch their particular data 
now if i just come here to cart i will just come here you can see here i am having ip1 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 so this belongs to user 1 imagine this belongs to user 1 and whenever user clicks on this cart all the data whatever ip it is matching this cart information will be displayed for the user now here suppose i am having 2 here i am having 2 so whenever user logs in and if the ip address is 2 it is going to fetch only this 2 data okay wherever i am having ip address as 2 only that data will be fetched for me using ip address we are going to access the data of the user so now here i am having this one we are just calling this get ip address and we are storing inside this variable okay we are just going to check for this ip address we don't need this data okay whatever data we are having inside the url now we don't need that one so i have just removed that and also here i am not going to use this i'll be removing this and also and operator i'm just going to check for this ip address so let's start from card details where ip address is equal to this one okay if this ip address is getting matched only then i am executing this query and also i am just counting the number of rows now here instead of count number of rows i can just change the variable i'll be writing here cart items count cart items only for better understanding if you write num rows then also it is going to work then here i'm just going to remove this i don't have to check any condition i am just going to remove that one and also here here i'm having double quotes here i'll be closing this double quotes now everything is fine now here i am just checking for this if condition if this add to cart button is active only then i am counting this number of rows and also if this is not active i have to display how many data i am having okay now let me just show you what i am telling now i am inside home page let me just come to home page now inside index.php add to cart variable is not active but still i am having this result okay inside this card i am having the data as 4 now again when i click on this add to cart now you can see add to cart button is active i'll click on ok now again i am redirected to index.php now this add to cart is not active even if that is not active i have to display this data so for that inside else also i'll just copy the same code i'll just copy the same thing and here i'm just going to paste i'll just remove one curly braces if this is set i am counting the number of rows if this is not set again i am counting the number of rows okay in both the condition we have to display the number so inside if and inside else i am just writing the same thing now here once it is done once i am getting some result now here i will just do echo whenever i call this function i should be getting how many number whatever number i got from here i am just displaying that one i will save this i will come to index.php file now here wherever we are having the cart item let me just come to navbar and inside this we are having this cart item okay here i have given the static data now i am just going to remove this and instead of this i will be calling that function to call that function first i will be writing here php script and here i will just copy this function i will copy this cart item function and inside this i am just going to call that function i will close this i will save this now i'll just come to my project now you can see here i'm having static data as one i'll refresh this one now you can see totally i'm having five data let me just come here i'll refresh my table now inside this table you can see totally i'm having one two three four five totally five products are available so five data has been displayed now if i just delete one i'll just delete id product id five now inside this i'll be having four products now if i just refresh this one you can see totally four products okay dynamically the data is getting changed i'll just increase the size okay now once it is increased now here i am having this dynamically i am getting this four again i'll come here i'll just delete one i'll just delete okay i'll come here I'll refresh this one now i should be getting three okay dynamically the data is getting updated okay even that add to cart is not set i'm getting the result i'll just come here now i'll just click on add to cart this item is already there let me just click again add to cart okay this item is already there dairy milk is also there okay let me just click on add to cart now this item is added now totally four items i should be getting i'll just click here you can see totally four items okay this is how we are going to display the dynamic data 
okay, this is how we are going to display the dynamic data what I have done I have just created another function cart items inside that I am just checking if this variable is active then I have to count the number of data present inside this cart table if that is not active if this is not active then also I have to count the number of rows and this function whenever I call this function whatever data I am getting from here and from here either one of this I have to return okay that is I just want to print this one so I am getting this result I will just come to index.php now from here I am just going to copy this php script inside product details I am just going to paste that one okay, here we are having I am just going to paste that one and also inside search product I am just going to paste that one I will save this I will just refresh this one now when I click on view more here also I am having this okay inside view more I am not having let me just come to product details I will just save this now if I refresh this one you can see here I am having dynamic data now when I search for this now inside search also I am having this card data okay in everywhere I have just displayed this card data okay it completely depends if you don't want to display this card in any other file you can just remove the data from here now suppose inside product details I have just commented this one I will save this I will refresh this one now when I click on view more you can see inside product details I will not be having the cart okay whatever you want to display you can display if you don't want to display then also you can remove okay it's not necessary that you have to display the details in all the pages wherever you want you can display if you don't want to display then you can just remove that content from there I'll just come to home page now everything is working completely fine add to cart button this item is already there again I'll just come here add to cart this item is already there okay totally four items you can see the number is not getting changed only four items I am having so four items will be displayed add to cart even this item is there let me just click on shoes now item is added to cart as soon as I click on ok you can see that should be updated to 5 and here I am having this 5 okay, now we have done with cart functionality now whatever data we are having inside the cart using that we have to display that data and also we are going to see how to display the total price okay this is the static data I have displayed instead of static data we are going to see how to display the dynamic data okay whatever prices we are having for this one okay here I have not displayed the price for this card okay I have not displayed the price let me just display the price okay later on we are going to see how to display the price okay I have just forgot that one field I'll just come here now we are having this price okay later on we are just going to add the price and using that price we are going to see how to add that price and how to store that price inside this total price 